Hello, welcome to the video for what is the main material translucency self shadowing. So I'm going to go ahead and cover our quick little example, then we'll cover the properties. So right here I have a little particle effect that is using translucency. However, it is using an emissive material. There's no actual lighting affecting it. Over here, I have two different particles. I've simply taken the other one and changed it over where it's now a default base material and lighting will affect it. Now I have a skylight that is coming from the top on the other side of this. So that's why you only really see black because there is no light on this side and I'm using self shadowing. If we flip to the other side and look, you're going to see something drastically different. We have the same effect with the different coloration as it goes up from the white up to the black like smoke. But the difference is lighting is now affecting these two examples. On the left, we have our default with our default settings. And on the right, I've made it slightly different for our example. So let's go ahead and cover our translucency self shadowing properties. So here's our translucency self shadowing properties. Remember, you're going to need a translucent blend mode. And in order to do shadowing, you're going to need to make sure you actually have a base color set up so you have something the light will affect in your material. So by default, these are the settings we come up with. We have a density scale. And that is highly amusing that these are both named the same. Anyways, this should be more of the dent. This should be named density opacity, and this should be the density scale. And then we have the density second density scale, and second opacity, backscattering exponent, multiple scattering extinction, which is a color, and then the start offset. Now these are really annoyingly named, but we'll cover what they do. Basically, the first part here determines how strong the shadowing is internally. The second part determines how strong kind of a secondary shadow is on the shadow itself to give it a little more detail. The next part determines a, a coloring that is inside of the shadow, kind of like um, a light maybe inside of the source itself and then causing the shadow itself to have a light inside of it and then it bounces off of the different particles and it's called it backscatters and basically it gives it kind of like another lighting effect internally based on this color itself which is different than your actual particle and then start offset which is basically how far away from the light that the shadow itself starts in terms of where this internal translucency self shadowing starts. Now they're a little, you know, complicated to understand there, but we'll cover them in detail here and we'll see the different changes. So let's go ahead and open this up and we'll cover what they do. So here's what I had set up. Let's go ahead and here's the, some of the most important things. If you have no values for your first two, primarily your first one, and we go and apply this and we'll let it compile. What you're going to see is nothing. You're not going to see any actual difference. If you don't have a scale for the first two, then you don't actually have any sort of translucency self shadowing and you're not going to have anything in here. It's just going to be your normal default particle effect and your translucencies are not going to have any shadowing. Now, so these first two by default are going to be 0.5 for your opacity and your 2.0 for your scale itself. This is going to determine how basically thick the interior shadow is going to be. So if we set these to default and we go ahead and apply it, you're going to notice we're going to have a slightly dark black shadow inside of our particle effect itself, almost as if the clouds, the smoke is thick and it's causing the light itself to bounce around inside of it. So now you can see this little bit of a black coming up and starting to form where our white is and then blended more with our oranges and our yellows. Now, depending on your scale and these first two scales, again, this first one is named wrong. It should not be that. If we change this up to one and we apply and we go and let it run, you'll see what it's going to do. I guess I'm going to bug report the fact that that should be named differently. So that's a good thing to find. But once our shadow, our shader finishes compiling, you're going to notice we have a much thicker black 
that's being displayed. That's because we have our basically our opacity setting up to a, basically a 1. It's a full opacity. Our scale is going to determine how much of that is self-shadowed. So if we set this up to something higher like a 5 and we hit apply, I really wish we could see the difference without me having to make like 50 different shadows, actual um, shaders to see the differences and setting them all, but we're going to make some extreme difference changes so that way they're easy to tell. So here we go. So I went ahead and set that scale up to 5, our second value, and now you can see we have a lot more black inside of our actual self-shadowing itself. You can see it's much, much thicker, and it lasts much, much longer. Keep in mind, we have it set to 1 for the opacity, so it's pretty non-translucent. So let's go over other ones. We have our second one, which is our density scale and our opacity again. And this is kind of like a secondary. It's intended to give more shade to the actual shadow itself that we've done. So by default, you're going to find it is set off. It's not going to be doing anything because it's by default, its opacity is going to be zero. So you can turn that on by changing your opacity. Obviously, zero is going to be nothing. One is going to be full opacity or non-translucent. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us a much thicker internal self-shadowing. And you're going to get more of a gradient effect on the shadow itself rather than just a solid black. So as you notice, it kind of looks like we have a massive thickness there is what it's going to do. Now our back backscattering exponent. By default, it gives you this kind of like this lightish yellow to give a little bit of a, a light reflecting internally. But the nifty part is it can be any color. So if I was to change this to green, for example, and go ahead and apply, we're going to see a nice little effect. And this, you want to set up, let's say you have this shadow, let's say you have this smoke coming off of like electrical equipment. Maybe we'll give this a little light blue effect so it looks like it's sparking. So as you notice, I changed this and now we have this green backscattering. So now we have this weird, odd green effect coming out. And of course, it's going to go into our actual particle effect which is where we see our yellows and oranges off into our black smoke now if we off if we adjust this well you know let's pull this down to like a point one we'll set our scale down smaller to like a five we'll set this down to like a two we'll give this like a point four give it a little less of a thickness give our actual shadowing more of a softer feel and we're going to see that the back scattering the green has got a little bit pronounced of effect and there we go. And you can see we don't have the black anymore. We now have this more green that's overpowering because we've gone ahead and we've set it up as a backscattering. We have all this green that's basically bouncing inside of our shadows. And we have no real darkness to occlude it. If we change this, you know, our exponent down significantly, we're going to see less green. So we'll go ahead and set this up. Let it compile. wait for it to finish and then when it's done now you can see we've got a little bit less we've got some more black showing up without the green being near as overpowering and of course you know you can adjust this bring it down here where it's less of an issue reset it back to our default so let's go ahead and reset everything back to default so let's go ahead and shut off our secondary let's make our first one pretty strong and let's go ahead and apply that let's shut off our backscattering exponent this way we can go ahead and see what our start offset does. So our start offset, what it does is basically you have your light source. And our light source right now is behind us when we're looking at this particle effect. And the starting offset is now 100 units from that light source to determine where the actual shadowing is going to start. So that gives it sort of a depth effect. The shadow looks like it's starting from inside of our particle source. If we were to change this down to something like zero, for example, what you're going to see is a slight difference. And we're not going to have that shadow look like it's inside of our particle effect now. It's going to look more like it's closer to our light source. Now you can see where that black is right in our face, and it's actually kind of covering up the whiteness and the rest of our particle effect because that shadow is basically it the translucency self-shadowing isn't real shadows it's 
faking inside of our volume. So our start offset is what you would use to determine how far away from the light hitting the outside of our particle or our mesh for where that shadow itself, this translucency self shadowing starts to emit. So it, it's a, it, it's, it needs to be adjusted based on your actual particle itself. And as you can see with the zero, we're kind of going to get this really weird effect where it's, it doesn't look right because you basically have black smoke now. We don't have a translucent shadow inside of our existing light or our particle. Now we do get this really weird effect where it looks kind of like we have black smoke burning. So that could be your effect as well. And of course, if you do the scattering color, then you're getting something weird. So if we set this to something much higher, let's say, for example, like a thousand and we go ahead and apply it, we're going to see the opposite effect. You're going to see your shadow actually has less of an impact because it's much, much farther. Remember, the default is a hundred. Now we've set it to a thousand, which means our shadow start is going to be much farther away from the light source. And we're going to get a different effect. And actually, if you set it too high, you're going to notice you're going to get a really odd issue because it doesn't know where it's supposed to start at. We reset this back to our default of zero. Oh, and I've also realized that I've set our density scale up to one. So that's really kind of bringing out this effect as well. There we go. So I set it back to 100. You'll notice now it looks like it's more coming like it's on the inside. If we look at it from the side, you can kind of see how we've got lightness on the right, darkness on the left, where our shadow looks like it's coming from. So there we go. Those are going to be our translucency self-shadowing options. Some of the key takeaways here that are important is you need to make sure. Let's go ahead and open this up. You have a base color for your material. You have to have some form of a solid material. Even if you're using translucency, you still have to have a material that the lights can hit. If you have a missive, then it's emitting light itself. It is not going to be affected by shadows, and therefore it's not going to cast shadow. So you need to make sure you have some form of a surface with a default lighting condition. You need to make sure translucency is unlocked, because if translucency is locked, you're not going to get access to your self-shadowing. Now, in addition to that, you want to make sure that your light itself is actually going to cast shadows. If your light, for example, our light source is not set up to cast shadows, then we're not going to actually have any self-shadowing. Therefore, we're not going to have any form of shadows in the world. So let's wait for this to go and compile. And you'll notice our shadows, our particles are normal. If we turn our cast shadows back on, You'll notice we have our little shadow itself on our surface, and you'll notice we actually have the little translucency self-shadowing start to work from inside. So those are two of the key takeaways, and that is how you use the translucency self-shadowing option inside of your main material. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.